In compiling the book Horsforth at War, some rolls of film came to light of Horsforth during the 1930s. These were filmed by Herbert Hodgson and his son Stanley. Our first glimpse of Horsforth comes in June 1931. It's a parade along Long Row prior to the comic cricket match which was held on a field in what is now the Woodside Tavern. The parade is filmed outside Herbert's chemist shop, the one with the awning. That man with the hat? Well, he's Mr. Archer, who organised the cricket match. Many of the buildings in the background on the right-hand side have since been demolished, and there are modern houses there today. The man on the motorbike is the ice cream seller Frankie Light of Woodside. The parade didn't actually come down Town Street, instead it turned down Broadgate Lane. These people are filmed outside cottages near the top of Broadgate Lane. They're opposite Lambert's greengrocers seen here on the right. This is the Whitsuntide Sing in 1931. The parade came down Town Street to the Green and included the congregations from the Primitive Methodists, St Margaret's Church, Craghill Baptists and the Salvation Army. Whitsuntide was the very first bank holiday when it was established in 1871. Children then used to get a new suit of clothes to celebrate and they joined their church or chapel on a sing around Horsforth. Sundays were very different then. You wore your best clothes all day and you'd probably have gone in the morning and afternoon to Sunday school as well as fitting in morning and evening services. On the 7th of May 1932, Horsforth Hall and its grounds were donated to the people of Horsforth by William Matheson, the man seen here with the bowler hat. Surprisingly, the formal opening was at the gates that stood off Hall Lane, where the entrance to the council yard is today. Matheson owned an iron foundry at Armley that made Rayburn cookers. He bought the hall in 1930 with the express intention of giving it to the people of Horsforth. He never lived there, but at Glenburn on Carverley Lane. The hall passed into the custodianship of Horsforth Urban District Council, who in 1952, rather than replace the roof, in an act which many still regard as civic vandalism, demolished the hall. Beside the bandstand, there were also tennis courts, a putting green and a miniature golf course. Here we see people eagerly teeing off. There were also ponds. You can see one here at the bottom of your screen. In the background is the wooden ex-servicemen's club. The hall had been built in 1699 for the Stanhope family who moved here from Low Hall on Carverley Lane. It was laid out with ponds and formal gardens. The pond to the north of the park can still be seen in the film. Until then, the park was only open on certain occasions for cricket and galas. It also looks quite different today, with the removal of the shelters, formal gardens, hedges and trees. We've moved on now to the 1st of July 1933 when the Horsforth branch of the British Legion organised a parade of veterans as well as a fancy dress parade. Again, the parade comes along Long Row. Perhaps somebody could tell us the significance of the bomb on the back of that lorry.
This time the parade continues down Town Street before entering the park. Seems strange to us, doesn't it, seeing Town Street with so little traffic? Oh no, watch out! But aren't those tin cars something else? The Earl of Harwood, the present Earl's father, inspects the veterans. Remember that the veterans you see here are from the First World War. It's amazing to think that in 2005 we had a virtual reenactment of this event. These Horsworth men that we see here on an outing, also World War I veterans. Now just watch, isn't this man keen to plant a tree? These trees are being planted in the park in 1937 to celebrate the coronation of King George VI. Once again we see William Matheson formally open what was known as the Jubilee Shelter, although locally known as the Old Man's Shelter for those who stopped here to put the world to rights. It used to stand next to the little bridge in the park. It was demolished in the 1980s. A lottery grant of £16,000 has been received by the town council to put on an event to commemorate the end of World War II in 1945. As part of that, a book is being produced consisting of interviews with people who lived in the town during the war years. I think I would be in it, because I would be a ranger, you see. I would probably carry him the flag. <laughs> Knowing me, I think I would be. <laughs> we, we, we pushed a trek car round Horsford, and we collected jam jars. We went all round it, we're knocking on people's doors. I must have pushed that trek car for miles. There was a glass shortage, you see. Glass wasn't... There was no glass for the whole market. And these were all steam sterilised, and more houses bought them. And I think we, I think we raised about four hundred quid. A lot of money in those days, you know. Our final piece of film is the earliest colour footage we have filmed in Horsforth. It was most likely filmed after the end of the war, and judging by the trees, was probably a remembrance parade. In it we see the cadet band, and those about to be conscripted into the armed forces as national servicemen. They are parading and training with mock wooden guns. They leave by the main park gates, probably going to the cenotaph. The veterans of previous campaigns are notable for their long Gannick-style maps. <laughs> 